Good day, good people, and welcome to SQL course part six. This is Web Dev Hero, and today we will talk about the where condition and some more stuff, of course, that is closely connected to it. I would say we dive right into it. A basic where statement. How would that look? It's easy. It follows the select statement and is often used with comparison operators. And these comparison operators you will see just in a minute. So let's see where you put the where clause or the where statement. It's, for example, select everything from employees where salary equals 1000. And you guessed it, the equal sign is a comparison operator so it's it usually goes hand in hand those two let's move to the comparison operators because there are quite a few these are the ones that you see here and um, we will not gonna be covering all of those because some are just not used that often we will go through those that are used frequently and then you will see how this works. All right, okay. So I have my browser here, my live SQL. Let's fit it to the window. I hope you can see something. I zoomed in a lot. It should be good. So I commented out everything here. Let's start from the top. So. You can select the first and last name from the employees table and look for everybody whose first name is John. Let's run this first and then go into the details and you have three Johns in the employees table. What's important here? They are case sensitive. Okay, it's important. So if I change this and put a small J in here, I will not have any more Johns left. All right, so this is important. It's case sensitive and you put it between the single quotation marks. That's pretty much all there is to it right now. Case sensitive, bear that in mind. Moving on, the next statement I prepared for, prepared for you is the order by clause but um, you would see in a minute why we use this here because first of all let's go through it we select the first and last name from the employees table and we search for something where the first name is bigger than john and no it's not that if john is the biggest dude in the room that there will be no results from this query it just means that everything that comes alphabetically after John will be shown. And just so you can verify this, we order it alphabetically by the first name. So here would be John, it's invisible, and the first one after John is Jonathan. J-O-H and following J-O-N, all right? So this is ASCII code, it just means that if you look for something that is bigger than John, then you're looking for something that is alphabetically behind John. And with order by, you order it by whatever you want. You could also order it by last name. But in this case, since we're looking for first name, it makes sense to order by the first name. Just so you can see it, let's order this by last name. Run the query. And now you have the last name order and still the selection only shows names that are bigger than John or that come after J-O-H-N alphabetically. Very well, folks. Moving on, I'm commenting this out and let's head to our next query. Now we will look for dates and what's important here is, is that dates are format sensitive. So we look for somebody who has been hired on the January 13, 2001. This is the date. 
And the format of this higher date is case sensitive. So what I cannot do in this database is switch this up. So January 13, 2001. This will not work, all right? Because it's just the format of the database. Now there might be other formats and you have to always know or look how the dates are configured for your database. In this case, this is the proper way to search for it and it is format sensitive. What did I do here? Where higher date is 13 gen, ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. When you um, highlight something and run it then, then it only runs the highlighted stuff. So format sensitive, there you go. Moving on to something else. And in this case, what we will do is we will go for dates and put the comparison operator, in this case, the less than or the greater than. And this also just, it, it works with numbers, of course. It works with names like we saw with John but it also works with dates. By the way, if you learned something until here, please subscribe to my channel. This would help me out a lot. And then you always see when I upload new tutorials. So here we go. Select the first name and the higher date from the employees where the higher date is bigger than the 13th of January, 2001. Order it by the higher date. What do I get here? Well, of course I get everything and everybody that has been hired after January 13. Because like with John, I look for something that is bigger than, so in this case, this means later than. And here I have all the people hired after January 13. And that's all there is to that. And again, you can order by whatever you want. Moving on. The in, in basically means that you have a set of values within the parentheses and you select everything that is within this data set. So in this case, I select the first name and salary where the salary is 17 or 24,000, uh, 17,000 or 24,000. And in this case, I have three people who match this condition, Steven, Nina and Lex. Don't um, get this mistaken with um, a range. So it's not from 17,000 to 24,000. There would be something different. It would be between. That's the cool thing about SQL. It's basically human language. And now let's execute this query. Same as above, only in this case, we look for everything between 10,000 and 17,000. And here you have a lot of folks that match this condition. And we order it by salary. So you can see that it's correct. This is inclusive. So 10,000 is included in the condition as is 17,000. If for some reason you want to order differently, because here we always start with the smallest and go to the biggest value. This is called S sending. You can make D sending. This is the exact opposite. And what happens now is that we start with the highest salary and go down the chain down to 10,000. The opposite of descending is ascending, but this is default. So if I put ascending, I might as well not put anything at all because this is default. All right. Very well. Moving on to our next example with wild cards. Sounds wild. And it is because when we select first name, last name, and we look for a pattern like with regular expressions, maybe you've heard of that before, 
You look for a pattern. So for example, you look for anybody whose name starts with J. Or in this case, you look for anybody, oh, wait, whose first name has an M and an A in it. This is how you would do it. Select first name, last name from employees, where first name like, and here you have two signs. For example, you have a dollar, uh, sorry, a percentage sign. This means zero characters or one character or multiple characters. Let's execute this. And what we get is uh, where first name like MA, um, we get Hermann, <laughs> wonderful, Ismail. So here you see you have the M and the A and an undefined number of characters before and afterwards, before three, afterwards two, and you have Ismail dash two and two. Now, if you want a specific number of characters before or after your condition, then you put an underscore. Okay, wait, let's see. So for example, if you just want Hermann, if you want three characters before the M, A, what you would do is this. So three underscores, then MA, and then as many characters as they wish. And now you only get Hermann. One, two, three characters, MA, and then there's two Ns, but there could be more or less. And these are called wildcards. You can chain those. You can say, for example, give me all the people where the first name has an MA in the middle and the last name has SC in the beginning. Let's see who meets this condition. It's Ismail Sierra. So where the first name has the MA, Ismail, and the last name starts with SC, Sierra. And this way you can chain this. You could also not say and, you could say or. So either the first name starts with that or the last name matches this wildcard. In this case, Hermann comes back because Hermann matches the first condition, not the second, but the first. first. So he's back in the game. All right, people, that was a lot of input. I hope you could follow with the comparison operators. Um, if you have any more questions, please let me know. Absolutely. I will answer the comments and please subscribe to my channel. Please like this video and I see you in the next tutorial.